Hey guys, welcome to Silicon Valley Girl. My name is Marina. I've been running my own business since 2011. It's been 13 years. I have two companies right now and within those two companies, we have tested a lot of different business ideas. I live in Silicon Valley, so I meet entrepreneurs every single day. And in this video, I wanted to give you some business ideas that are easy to start in 2024. And those ideas are in promising markets, meaning the markets are growing. It's kind of easy to start them. So I basically arranged all of those ideas going from the hardest ones to start start, meaning you need more capital, you need more expertise, going to the easiest ones to start in 2024. So if you're thinking of becoming an entrepreneur in 2024, please watch this video up to the very end. Being an entrepreneur is an intense career, but it's also very rewarding because you can control your own life. So let's get into it. Business idea number 10 kind of stands out because I just want you to focus on whatever you can do the best and whatever you're doing right now and try to research all the AI tools that just became available in the past couple years, basically. So what I'm saying is that something that you're doing now, something where you have your clients, where you're an expert, it's very easy to just change the market and say, oh my God, creators are making so much money. Oh my God, I need to go into real estate because all of those people seem to have this amazing lifestyle. What we tend to forget is that switching industries doesn't really help. What really helps is digging deeper in whatever you're doing, finding out things that you like doing and finding things that you do not enjoy doing at all and delegating those things. Because long-term commitment to one particular thing really pays off. So here's my advice. I'm a creator and I've started using a lot of AI tools this year. We're using Dubformer. This is like an amazing tool that can translate your video um, into different languages with AI voiceover. I also use Allang for that. Uh, we have perplexity that does my research. We use Descript for editing. A lot of things became much more accessible in the past year and my team has become a lot more productive. And what I'm saying by that is that you can start using AI tools in your niche and become 3x, 4x, 5x more productive. And here's the business idea. Not only you're increasing your own productivity, you can also start a business later on consulting entrepreneurs in your area on how they can simplify their life by using AI. And this market is already a $55 billion market. It's huge, but it's set to increase to $456 billion by 2031. So there is 100% chance you're in a growing market and this, there's 99% chance AI tools are only going to grow in the next years. So stay focused on them. Don't miss out on that trend. I think it's really important. Our next business idea is a game changers. But first, let's thank the sponsor of this video, Zoviz. This video is brought to you by Zoviz, one of the AI tools that I recommend to everyone who's starting a business. Zoviz is an AI-driven platform that helps you create your logo and brand identity in minutes. In addition to logos, Zoviz provides a complete branding suit, including social media graphics, stationary designs, email signatures, and favicons. Here is how it works. Input your brand name, choose your logo design, once you choose the logo, the platform will create the full brand kit in seconds. You can also personalize your logo by changing the color, size, and other parameters. For example, I can enter my brand name, Silicon Valley Girl, and it generates different logos for me. I can also specify my industry and color range for more precise results. Unlike other platforms that use generic icons, Zovis generates distinctive icons specifically tailored to your brand and provides complete usage rights for all logo files and branding elements. So you can use them freely across various media from digital platforms to physical marketing materials. If you need a logo for your company or your pet project, I encourage you to try out Zovis. I will leave the link in the description below this video. And now let's get back to our business ideas. We have so many more and some of my absolute favorites. And by the way, I've already started one of them and it's already profitable. So keep watching. The next business idea is actually evolving from the first business idea that I just mentioned. This is actually creating an AI tool for your niche. My first business was in study abroad. And my first initial thought when I saw the market, I was like, we need to create a platform to make it all standardized because every university had their own website and their catalogs and brochures and it was really hard to navigate in that world and my initial approach was like let's build a website that has everything so what we realized in the process and we've been there for like 10 years we, we eventually stopped uh, making this booking.com for study broad experiences just because AI came to the market and what we can do now 
we can basically ask AI, we can create a chat bot where you ask, what's the best university for me to study in? Do they provide scholarships? How much it costs to study there? Uh, what are my chances, like assess my chances. You see what, where I'm going? You take your expertise that's existing and instead of building a whole website or a booking platform, you just build an AI chatbot. And there are so many tools out there. You can hire a developer for your business who's gonna build that AI chatbot. But instead of building something really heavy weight, start utilizing AI chatbots in your industry. And if I had to start our business all over again in 2024, the number one thing I would do is hire an AI developer to help me develop the chatbot that will help people with admissions. This market is expected to grow remarkably at 36% from 2024 to 2030. Business idea number 10, anything that's related to connecting people offline. There's been recently a research that most of dating starts online, which is crazy, especially for me. I met my husband when we studied together. Like seriously, did we ever see this coming to this where we meet our spouses online? But this trend is only growing and we meet our friends online and then hang out offline. We meet our spouses there. Remember when we used meetup.com to find local meetups to meet other people? This market has evolved significantly. Some of my friends are building an app called locals.org where you can organize events. But the thing is, there is such a huge demand right now to connect with like-minded people in different locations. So if you're a digital nomad in Bali, I don't know, you're traveling all the time, or maybe you're a family with kids who are traveling to different countries, create a community around whatever you're doing. It could be subscription-based, it could be a paid group within WhatsApp or Telegram or whatever, but basically connecting a small group of people who are in the same situation as you are can be a great business in 2024. I know I am talking a lot about AI in this video, but we're in 2024 and uh, what else do we have left to do? We have to focus on AI. Like this is a genius business idea. I actually saw my engineer friends, so they trained the ChatGPT app for their kid. They told ChatGPT that their kids like this certain character, that they like to read stories about space, that right now they need to learn English language grammar, that they like this color, they like this food, this is their interest. Like they gave the app the whole background and because they're engineers, they could kind of make it professionally. And so this AI chatbot replaced cartoons for that kid because now the kid interacts with ChatGPT, asks questions, but basically what they ask ChatGPT to do is to come up with a bedtime story when parents don't have enough time to come up with a professional you know, story to captivate the kid's interest. Of course, it cannot replace uh, the child-parent interaction, but in order to make their free time more productive, because for example, my kids would just sit down and watch like Nasta like crazy. What if they could interact with a chatbot that will create stories for them on the go, suited for their particular needs these days? Like, okay, I'm struggling uh, to put my two-year-old in a separate room. She wants to sleep with me in my bed. Can you come up with a story that will be great for a two-year-old, Lily likes this, this and that. Can you come up with a story to help her transition into her own room? Just think about that. This app could really help a lot of parents there. Of course, you need to understand kids psychology. You need to understand how to build AI, but this could be an app with a huge, huge, huge potential. Yesterday, I returned from Hawaii. And when I was exiting San Francisco airport, I finally saw this billboard that I've been waiting for because I'm originally from Russia and in Russia they've been delivering healthy food to airports and uh, railway stations for years now and I finally saw this Uber delivery to Terminal 3. I was like, wow, okay, I need to explore that. The thing is, and you know how the reality works here in the US, you fly economy, you fly for six hours, you get crackers. Doesn't matter if you travel with kids, you're left with no food. And what we normally do, we start cooking food and we have our nanny who helps us with that. But not all the families can do that. So if you could come up with some kind of project that delivers healthy food to airports, because again, if you are traveling from I don't know, San Jose airport, does it have any healthy food restaurants? No, it doesn't. What I brought to my last flight were slices of papaya, uh, buckwheat, uh, what else do we bring? Cucumbers and uh, beef patties because I want to eat healthy on an airplane. I don't want to take a burger from a local restaurant with bad oils, etc. Please come up with healthy food delivery to airports. 
black kitchen, whatever. But that would be a great, great business. And I think the hardest part in this business will be actually figuring out the delivery uh, to the airport because there are certain regulations. But again, when you start, you start small and you figure that out on the go. So I think it's, I think it's brilliant. I would personally use it. And by the way, the next business idea, I am talking about this, but I'm so glad. Remember when I made those videos a couple of years ago, three years ago, I told people like, if you start one of those ideas, please reach out because I'm happy to help. So someone actually reached out. They started a healthy food delivery by local people. So they're gonna deliver a home cooked meal to Los Altos and the meal is going to be cooked somewhere, you know, locally by a family. Oh my goodness. Again, I know a lot of families here in the Bay Area who just, they don't have time to cook and they rely either on heating up frozen food, which is not healthy at all, or they rely on DoorDash deliveries, which is also not healthy. What if you could just order from another local family, you know, Russian or Slavic, this is what I would do, or like Italian. You control the ingredients, so you tell them not to use canola oil when they fry things organic meat, organic eggs. You come up with a list of requirements and they cook for you. You support local people and you also eat healthy. I'm glad this is coming to Los Altos, but I'm not sure it's coming to the whole uh, America or to your country, wherever you're watching from. Research that could be huge, very operational, like super operational. You need to have a lot of skills in managing a lot of people, regulations, making sure their kitchens are clean, etc. But that could be a game changer for a lot of people. The global meal kit delivery services market size was 20 billion in 2022 and is expected to grow at 15% rate from 2023 to 2030. Okay, and since we're talking about kids and food, you know how focused I am on bringing the best business ideas from the outside world to the US? You probably know that if you've been watching me for a while, but basically one of the things that I see a lot in other countries that is not too widespread in the US, and I think Americans would actually appreciate it, are restaurants, since we're talking about food, restaurants with babysitters. Like I am willing to pay extra $30 for someone to watch my kid while I'm having a romantic dinner with my husband. Yes, of course you could have a nanny, but what if the kids don't want to stay home with a nanny? What if they want to go out with you? Why not have a special corner in your restaurant with a person who's there maybe from 5 to 9 p.m., doesn't have to be the whole day, but where you can either pay extra or maybe it's included in the service to leave your kids with that person. And I've seen that in Thailand. I've seen that in Dubai. I've seen that alone in Russia. And I see how many people come there with their kids. For you, it's higher check because kids are going to eat. You can charge a separate fee for a nanny. I know there is only one similar thing I've seen here in the Bay Area. There is a fitness club in Los Gatos and they actually have a kid's room. And I, when, I, when I saw that, I was like, no way. No way this is happening. But this is a great, great, great thing to do. Either it's a fitness club with a kid's room, maybe it's a restaurant with a kid's room, maybe it's whatever, art gallery with a kid's room. Think about the kids, please. For some reason, I think America is very individualistic and uh, a lot of people like, you know, take care of your own stuff, but let's help each other with raising families, please. Business idea number three, home organizing. I recently worked with a home organizer. She actually wrote a book and she's been in the industry for 10 years. But those people have pretty high rates and they're actually very efficient. They charge from 200 to $375 per project for a single room or up to $5,000 per major home organization. But I don't want you to just start this business and do everything by yourself. She has this whole network of people who took her course, learned her method, she has an affiliate program with Amazon and all of the stores where you can buy all of the boxes and containers. And she's developing this whole service that matches you with people in the industry. I think this is genius. I think more and more people are trying to live more sustainably, recycle things. If you include selling those things for those people at a 50% commission. I don't mind if you come to my house and you say, okay, I'm going to sell these things for you on eBay, but I'm going to take 50%. I will just let you do that because I don't have time for that. My assistant charges $30 an hour and, uh, you know, and it's not going to be too efficient. But that kind of holistic service and home organization is going to have a lot of demand in bigger cities like New York, San Francisco, the Bay Area, Los Angeles, and in big cities in your country.
All right, we're coming to top two business ideas. They're actually my favorite. So uh, like this video if you're still watching because I don't know, like I would start them by myself if I had more time. Number two is an app that helps you or whatever, an AI chatbot that helps you find a profitable Airbnb. We just recently bought a property in Hawaii but I've been researching the market for a year. I've been researching, I've been going to Carmel, I've been touring a lot of counties here in California, only to find out the regulations are crazy and California is not the best market. But when I was looking for information on YouTube, it was really hard to find anything. And only when I met our broker, who only specializes on the big island, he was able to tell me, yes, the economics are gonna work, uh, you're gonna cover your mortgage with your Airbnb income. So we bought in the big island. And then I met a guy who specializes in Boca Raton and he knows the areas. But what if I'm just starting out and I don't know anyone in the industry? How do I find out that area? So this could be both. This could be an app that tells you like, hey, these are the top 10 counties. Because you can find that information online, but they never talk about regulations. They talk about like, oh, LA is a great area for an Airbnb. Oh, really? Like if you look at the counties, almost everywhere it's prohibited or like there is such a restrictive limit that you won't ever become profitable. So if there is an app where I say like, hey, I have $200,000 for a down payment. I'm looking for an Airbnb where my mortgage is going to be covered by my income please find that area and please find specific houses. So you basically integrate Zillow, you integrate AirDNA, and you have an AI analyzing all of the local county rules. This could be a game changer for this market. You could be acquired by AirDNA, you could be acquired by Zillow, or you could just be a great standalone app. Please do that. And business idea number one is actually my favorite and something that I've started doing myself. Proud to say that. I'm actually transitioning from just being in front of the camera to producing YouTube channels. We've recently launched several YouTube channels in the niche where I understand. But it's just amazing that I know a lot of people want to be on social media and you see how much YouTubers are making and how much everyone is talking about a you know, faceless YouTube channel, etc. I wouldn't say it's an easy business idea, but if you understand the market, like for example, I understand test taking and I understand there's a lot of free real estate on YouTube when it comes to tests. So we started doing that. Basically, if you're an expert in something, you understand a certain area, a certain niche, and you don't want to be in front of the camera, learn how social media works. Find a person to be in front of the camera or create a faceless YouTube channel. Again, this is not the easiest idea out there. You have to have all the expertise. You have to understand how everything works and you need to have some start capital because you need to pay for editing, you need to pay that person. In our experiments, you need at least four to five months to become profitable with a channel. But again, I have a 10 year experience on YouTube and I understand how it works. So it's going to take you longer but I feel it's such a huge opportunity to occupy this free space on YouTube in your area of expertise without having to be in front of the camera. That was it for me for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end. Please let me know down in the comments below what was your favorite business idea and I will see you very soon on my channel. Bye.